What's going on everyone? This is SuperTal3 and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Microsoft Azure AZ-104 certification and letting you guys know my recommendation whether you guys should take it in 2020 or not. So stay tuned. So I just took the exam while it is still in beta, so I'm not going to get my results back for a good while but when I do I will tweet about it I'll tell you guys my results or if you want a dedicated video hit me up in the comment section below and I'll make a dedicated video on my results and things I did good or bad on etc but right now I have a few notes that I took after my exam was over about what the exam is sort of about not going to give any specifics away as that would be against the non-disclosure agreement just going to give you general ideas of things that I think you should study extra for. First thing I should let you guys know, at least on the beta exam, it was 180 minutes long. So like three hours long, really, 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 really long time. I don't think it's gonna be even close to that long if it's not in beta, but for me it was very long because it was still in beta. So this has a really large networking portion. Um, it focuses a whole lot on networking. There's probably at least 10 to 15 questions about networking related things. So you're going to need to be up to snuff on that. A lot of questions in the networking area deal specifically with network security groups. They're not really like firewalls, but they're close enough. Basically, they're rules that you can apply to either single VMs, subnets, resource groups, subscriptions, whatever. Um, I don't think you can apply them to subscriptions, just resource groups, subnets, and VMs. But they're basically like, hey, allow this port inbound, uh, allow these ports outbound and deny all the rest. And a lot of questions are structured like, can VM1 in subnet 1 with X rules in the network security group applied communicate with VM2 in subnet 2 with X network security group rules put in place? And, you know, can it communicate? Can they communicate with each other on certain ports? Just that kind of thing. There's a whole lot of those questions, so definitely take note. The other really big section that I saw on the exam was storage. There were a whole lot of questions about storage, especially things to do with like, okay, if you're gonna back up a VM, what kind of storage do you need to back it up to? Would it be blob, file, table, and I forget whatever the other option that you have in Azure is, but those were three of the four options. And it was like, should you back it up to these? or not. Also uh, another big section that kind of ties into both sections is the on-premises section. There's going to be a lot of questions in the networking and storage areas that deal with on-premises networks and mainly you're going to have things like, okay, with as far as networking goes, I need to establish a VPN from my main site to Azure site to site VPN. How am I going to do that? You'll also have questions about like, okay, I'm going to establish a point to site VPN from my laptop to Azure. How am I going to do that? What am I going to use to do that on Azure's end um, to make that work? In the storage section, there's going to be a lot of, okay, I have these machines on-prem. I need to back them up to Azure or replicate the VMs to Azure or transfer everything over to Azure, things like that. How am I going to do that? What am I going to need? What's the first step of the process that I'm going to have to follow? Things like that. Um, there's a whole lot of those questions on the exam as well. I did see a few questions about containers. So like, what is the command that I'm gonna need to spin up containers? What am I gonna need to, what settings am I gonna have to have to replicate these containers whenever CPU usage gets above a certain amount? Things like that, um, replication of VMs also is another thing that I saw on the exam. So this is a quick summary of pretty much all the general areas that I saw on the exam. It's by no means a comprehensive overview but just the things that I that stuck out to me on the exam and that there were a lot of questions about to guide you in your studies for this exam. So now we're going to move on over to whether I think that you should take this exam in 2020 and that answer really depends on a few key factors. One, what area of IT are you in? Are you in programming and DevOps? Are you in networking? Are you in cloud? Or are you in something like cybersecurity like I am? I would say since we as a society in IT are moving more towards cloud-based technologies, I think this exam could be beneficial to every 
area of IT. Now, is it necessary? No, but it could be beneficial. It's a lot more in depth than the AZ900, which is Azure Fundamentals. Think of it this way. You have Azure Fundamentals up here at a very, say this is the ground and then you have Azure Fundamentals right there. It's just really shallow. There's not much room to dig down. Very basic, more like a marketing overview. And then you have AZ104, which is another step down, a lot more deep and in detail and you actually have to know how to use Azure to pass the AZ-104 exam whereas you don't really on the AZ-900 just know enough about basic cloud technology that's all you have to know for the AZ-900. If you are a cloud administrator yes I highly recommend that you take the AZ-104 because that's basically what it is Azure administrator if you're using Azure or want to use Azure then yes take the AZ-104 right now unless you have the AZ-103 or other equivalent cloud certifications then you probably don't need it but if you don't have any cloud certifications and you want to be a cloud administrator definitely definitely take the Azure AZ-104 exam now if you're in cybersecurity depending on your work environment or what role you want to get into this exam could be beneficial to you um, for example if you even if you want to be something like a pen tester it could be beneficial to you because it would allow you to get from really familiar with cloud and sort of how they work and it would help you better be able to attack your clients environments and sort of pinpoint the weaknesses that could be present in the environment if you're a programmer or devops developer then likely you're pushing some code to the cloud depends on what company you're at how advanced they are in technology but if you're publishing things to the cloud all the time and running your workloads off of the cloud, then I highly recommend that you take this exam so that way you know how everything in the cloud works. But overall, whether you take this exam or not, Microsoft has some great study resources on Microsoft Learn for this exam. And you don't have to, if all you need is the knowledge and you don't need to prove it to anybody that you know it, you can just go there and you can study and do the labs that they have. They are free for most of them. There's a few things that aren't free, but a whole lot of them are. And if you're just wanting to learn, definitely go there. Link will be in the description below for that. Um, but if you want to prove to people, I do know what I'm talking about, I do know Azure, then definitely go take this exam. All right, so that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. About 95% of the people who are watch my videos aren't subscribed so it'd be really helpful to me if you do choose to subscribe also comment down below do you want me to make a follow-up video to this as to whether I pass this exam or not and if you have any more detailed questions about this exam feel free to comment below and I'll try and respond to all of your comments thank you for watching this is super Tal 3 signing out